The Nine Years Podcast is brought to you in association with Season Master and the Window Workshop. everybody and welcome to episode 323 of the nine years podcast this could get confusing this is the 2023-24 season preview edition of the show i am nick draper i am joined as always by the host of the bbc by the host of the bbc sport website oh dear by the face of the bbc sport website you have well done um mr stuart deacons i have nothing more to add it is a season preview edition you know what that means we're going to look at our squad we're going to look at what we think is going to happen in the Division League 2 as a whole. We're also going to have a look ahead to the uh, trip to Grimsby on Saturday. And uh, we have a brand new game as well, Stu. And I know there are many of you out there that are super excited by the idea of a game every single week on the show. Don't worry, we're never getting rid of it. We've just got a new different game this year. And it's amazing. I am so impressed with myself for coming up with it. But anyway, enough with that. Thank you very much for downloading the show, however you have done so. We are, of course, the 104% unofficial podcast still, and we'll leave it there. Let's get straight into it, Stu. I want to talk about our first episode of the new season last week, when we interviewed Craig Cope, our head of football operations. <laughs> Joe, I, I was thinking myself, did we do one? I'm like, it was such a mad day, wasn't it? Pompey, um, Pompey up. game. Um, I was it keep you on? Yeah. yeah, I yeah, forget. Yeah. Play, I mean. um, and um, <laughs> there you go. Um, and yeah, you know, Craig Coke kindly gave us an hour of his time, didn't he? In between um, loads of stuff going on, yeah, I totally forgot about it, but yeah, it was a good interview. Um, it's one of those ones when, when you do an interview, sometimes you don't always, um, I want not to say don't pay attention, but sometimes you miss bits and pieces. You know, it's only when you listen back to it in your own time that you you sort of capture some stuff, and it's actually really more impressive than what I thought. Um, he, he gave us a lot of his time, and actually. I don't know about you, but I come away from there even more positive. I've been fortunate enough to to speak to Craig quite a bit, but I come away from there even more confident that we are um, we're progressing exactly the way we should be off the pitch. Yeah, the we've as we said, position that we felt we needed for a long time, finally got it sorted, and we I think we're going to see the benefits of it. We're all expecting to see the benefits of having Craig in. One question we asked him about last season why we ended it so poorly and he made the point that actually out of however many seasons 11 seasons back in the football league how we've only ever had one top half finish and we've had really poor second half of the seasons on a number of occasions and he spoke about last season in particular he said uh, main reason that he came up with was injuries and the fact our squad wasn't big enough to survive the number of injuries we had a lot of young players having to come in on, onto the bench to fill gaps left us a bit short and I just wanted to pick up with him at the time, but we just wasn't the opportunity to. That problem of squad depth was exacerbated for me by the five sub rule. And you look back to some fixtures. I remember these were all be home games, but home games with Mansfield, with Salford, famously, Stevenage as well. Their size of their squads made such a big difference because they had the five, the option of the five subs, and obviously they had more numbers and more established first team experienced players to choose from i yep. just would like to remind everyone my opinion of the five substitute rule is it is absolutely dire and horrendous and awful and i see no reason to have it whatsoever so when we start thinking of thinking about uh, ways that the club are looking to save money and increase revenue remember the reason we're doing that is because we need to fund a squad that can cope and play against teams that have got some private finance, which means that they can spend more on salaries to have a squad of at least 16 first choice, basically. Normally what you'd expect to see, first 11 players, experienced players, which we didn't have last season. Um, yeah, yeah, I find it a, I find it a mad rule. And I note we're going to come up to some of the other rule changes that are going to be instigated ahead of this new season. I note the championship now is going to allow teams to name nine subs. Why on yeah, earth right. would you have a bench of nine subs in the championship? Yeah, I, I, Joey, it's never you know you know as well as I do. We're never going to get away from five subs. You know, technically, you might. I, mean, I don't want to bore you. I don't want to 
rattle your cage so early on in, in the podcast season. But, you know, wouldn't surprise me if you got to six. Well, you, can, you technically can get to six subs. You can already. Yeah. If you go into a cup, if you go into a cup extra time, you get an extra sub or you get a concussion sub. Um, so you technically can have six anyway, can't you? Um, and don't get me wrong, a concussion sub, I have no issue with at all. No, that's um, fine. Uh, and I think it's a good ruling. Um, as long as the clubs play ball, you know, I think there's only so. I think there was a situation where wasn't there a player? I'm trying to think now, but there was a situation where a player stayed on, and then there's no way they should have stayed on. And then equally in the same weekend, there was a player that come off who didn't want to come off, but was was basically said no. The medical staff enforced that substitution. Um, but yeah, the championship. Hey, look, let's be fair. You go to a World Cup now, you can name your whole squad. You know, remember the days when we had like 24 men squad at Italian 90 and there was people who had never even got on the bench. Now you're on the bench. So if you're in the squad, you're on the bench um, as a possible substitution. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. Um, I, I actually, that rule hadn't actually um, caught my attention, to be honest with you. I suppose just because it's not a surprise, really, the way it's going. There are some rules that caught your attention. There's one that came to my attention, most people's attention, which is the new injury time rule where they're going to have set time amounts that they're going to register and add on to the end of the 90 minutes for substitutions, goal celebrations. I think the clock is going to be stopped when a penalty is awarded and not restarted. And then however long it takes before the penalty is actually taken, they're going to add that on to the end of the game as well. Johnny Jackson, meet the manager earlier this week and an interview since then on social media Reading between, well, not even reading between the lines, really. I'm not sure he's sold on this idea whatsoever. He does not look particularly enthused by the idea of games <laughs> lasting 100, perhaps 105 minutes, however long it might be. Some of the ridiculous <laughs> times we saw in the World Cup. Well, I didn't see any of the World Cup. I was told about it because I didn't watch any of the World Cup. But I just, uh, do you know what? Nobody wants this. Literally nobody wants People would like to see, well, people say they'd like to see time wasting cut down on when you see it's taken to the extent that the Wickhams of this world took it to in previous seasons but by the same token every every single club is guilty of it we all do it we did it goalkeeper catches a simple cross and falls to the ground theatrically and lies there for 30 seconds every single team does it nobody wants to see this added on time to the nth degree and especially if you are away at barrow for example and the only train back to london departs at something like 10 past five you've got other considerations to take into account. And, you know, when you have situations in the past where you might have had a, a bad, you know, like a bad injury, like we saw a really bad injury in, in a friendly the other day, didn't we? Um, mm. And you you accept that, don't you? Because those are sort of freak occurrences. But when you start getting into the, these 15, 10, 15 minute extra injury time periods because of all this, because, you know, they stopped the clock when the ball went out for a throw and stuff like this, it just would become too much, too much. Um, I'm not looking forward to it at all. It's weird. You're probably not surprised if I differ on this one because I'm a little bit. I, I maybe it's where I'm tight in the old age, right? But I, if I'm going to pay for ninety minutes, and you could argue, you could argue, <laughs> and say, I've never paid for ninety minutes, um, even going back to the olden days, and you're probably right. Um, it, it was interesting, right? So that the the average ball in play stats they have for League Two is forty eight minutes on average. The ball is in play, i.e., mm -hmm. you action. Um, so it's 48 minutes, 50 minutes in League One, 52 minutes in the Championship, and 55 in the Premier League, which probably means in the Premier League, you've got better players, you can't kick it into Rosette all the time. Um, but in a sense, I'm, I'm all for cutting time wasting out. I don't think you're going to cut time wasting out because there's always going to be new ways of wasting time, isn't there? But I also do want to, I do want to get. I suppose, in a way, I'd rather the referees managed it better, the time wasting, because we've all seen it, we all know it. Um, what they're gonna, so not, I don't think they're going to stop the clock. I think they're going to probably a mental clock in terms of a mental. That's a minute. That's because we know for substitutions it's thirty seconds for each. Yeah, well, substitution, apparently, it? yeah, yeah. Allegedly. So the time, so the time that's going to be um, considered to be added on is goal celebrations, which I actually agree. And there was a sample where there was a, a, an injury time goal that basically took all the injury time in the celebration strangely enough do you know what I mean mm -hmm. so they're saying now goal celebration time is going to be added on substitutions we know injuries and an interesting one is preparation for free kicks is oh, going geez. to be added on oh my good god I'm never going see, to never get home you see, see I knew it was going to I knew it was going to wrap your case which is why I, when I found it I was like this is happy but you know what when you think about it though right there are sometimes we take forever and sometimes referees guilty of it like measuring 10 yards it's nowhere I don't know mm -hmm. where you got the measurement tape from 
So, and this is why they, they, they reckon that like, you know, the World Cup had was famous for literally having 10, 15, there's 21 minutes in the England game, but that mm. was due to, okay. but that was due to um, two injuries. Um, I think there was 10 substitutions or something. But you're right. The, the, other, the other side to it is that away games, you know, we've got a lot of fans who book train travel, which is not cheap when they're running. Um, so, I suppose what it does, right, just don't call the referee a blank word because if you do, he's probably going to think, well, I know what train you've got going back and I'm going to pay 20 minutes injury time now for you. That'll do you. <laughs> if the referee looks over to the West Stand where I'm sat and someone's doing it, if he can actually pick out who was saying it, fair play to him. No wonder he's, no wonder he's referee's got with eyesight like that. Jeez. <laughs> but you're right. I, look, it's going to happen in, 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 the, in the Women's World Cup uh, that I've been watching and, and been enjoying, to be fair. Um, it's now 10... 11 12 minutes um of it sounds like time torture later. well it is if you, it is if you were like last season where we're holding on to a lead and we know we've now got another <laughs> <line>. <laughs> we were never holding on to a lead <laughs> <laughs> but hey, look, from from a serious point of view i'm all for us seeing more action in terms of balls on pitch not balls on pitch pitch being played <laughs> i'm all for that um i'd rather the referees managed it better um Hey, look, I would, and you're going to really hate me for this, I'd rather go back to having an independent time, not go back, but copy what rugby league do in terms of having, you know, um, actual stop stop the game and the last phase of play. You know when rugby do it, where they mm-hmm. you, know, you, hit, you hit the minute and then when the ball goes out of play next, that's the end of the game. Um, I would rather have an independent timekeeper. Because I think there are, there are teams that take the absolute mick, and we're not alone in that. Let's be fair, Harry Pell has made a has made a living out of it for us for the last two seasons. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm for it, but I can see it. I can see it causing problems. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. But anyway, we'll see how it goes starting this weekend. Right, pre-season then. Let's have a quick round of pre-season. It ended last week yep. with a win at Wealdstone. We won 2-0. I think I got that right. Omar Bugle and uh, Ali Alhamadi with the goals. So Ali Alhamadi working his way back to fitness ahead of the new season, which everyone's very, very much happy to see. Spoke very briefly last week, Craig Cope, lots of the new signings. We touched on Armani Little and Jake Reeves. We know about Bugil. We know about Nerfil, um, Josh Nerfil. Goalkeeper, Alex Bass. Yes. Uh, lone goalkeeper. From Sunderland, yeah. Yeah. Um, who's, who's not a Geordie or a Mackham or whatever called up there. Um, he is a Southern based. Um, lad, um, I had a fortune. I was fortunate enough to meet him another week, and he's a very quiet, um, very quiet goalkeepers are either eccentric or quiet, aren't they? One or two, they're never in between. Um, but from what I've seen of him in pre season, of course, you can only judge him against what we're playing against, and mm. pre season is like friendly fire, isn't it? But, um, he's a, he's a big lad, I think, a command his area, and he's he's good with his feet. So, I think, uh, I don't, I think he will, he will be a number one, even though he hasn't got a number one goalkeeper jersey. Um, but I think he will be. I think it'd be first choice to start the season. As long as he's not quiet on the pitch, it's difficult. It, it doesn't seem. Look, from what I've from what I've seen pre season, I didn't. I didn't the only one I missed was um, the last one against Wheelstone. Um, but he's not dominant in terms of vocal. But if a cross is there to come, he comes and gets it. Um, mm-hmm. So he's not he's not he's not he's not Ashley Bay. So like you can imagine him and Ashley Bay in, in a in an empty room. There'd only be one person talking all the time. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be Alex. Remember Ray Merry? He never used to say a word. He's a goalkeeper that never said a thing. Anyway, that's <laughs> one for the that's now one for the sort of yeah. old school, isn't it? Blimey. going back twenty years. Um, right, who else? Joe Lewis and Ryan Johnson are they our centre halves pairing for the start of the season? I think so. Um, I like them. Um, one thing I would say, um, we've we've recruited really good people. Good people. That's probably not the right way of putting it. But we've, as well as we've we've recruited players' skill, we've also recruited for their personality. I was going to say, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And these two, um, Brian Johnson, lovely guy. Um, you can tell he's been around the block a bit. Um, good centre half. Joe Lewis is going to be a a, a lady's favourite because, to be fair. If you've seen his shorts, like they are skin tight. No, I don't, I don't, Johnny. Um, Is this at all times of the day? Hey, I was I was fortunate enough to do um. I, so I've done a tour for the new players. We we done the induction day, and I offered to do a tour 
Um, and we were walking around and I was just chatting to him saying, I noticed how you kept putting your shorts up um, as if they were too long. And he went, well, I was, it was really, really warm. And I laughed and I was like, look, if I had fires like yours, I'll be putting my shorts up as well. However, All right, get a room. The, next, the next game, I think Rocket has basically got like, I think he's gone to the youth kit and got shorts that are literally ridiculously tight. Um, so he is going to be a woman's favourite. There's no doubt about it. He's, um, he's a really nice guy, but he's also a, a, a hey, look, he's he's a looker, a looker. I don't know how you call that nowadays. Do you know what I mean? But lovely guy, but he's going to be a, a lady's favourite. I've no doubt about that. I hope Lyle Taylor's not listening. He's going to start getting jealous. Your affections are going elsewhere. But let's uh, move on very quickly. Housewives' favourite, I think, is the term that would formerly have been used but i'm not sure i'm not sure who knows what I'm you're not, allowed to say anymore who but if you're correct nowadays i have no idea what to say do you know what i mean he's gonna be loved by everybody not not a clue what it's what's acceptable not anymore to be honest with you. uh right who does that leave um james ball yeah not uh, you know what, he only, yeah he only come in for the pompey game i think he was here the pompey game do you know what he's a size he's a pro six two six three um you can instantly you can instantly see this season we are a bigger physical team um in every area and in the field. So he's definitely from what I saw puts himself about like to tackle. Um yeah, I can see exactly why we've got him. We we're no longer the, the midgets within midfield. We've got some real um higher balance in that area. The only injuries we've got going into the new season, Hassan Billa and uh, Paul Callum Bailly on the injury list. Not sure. Um, I think PK is in training or he's starting to train, so he might be back yeah. soon. Billa are about for a bit longer. Who plays, well, I mean, not just right back. What sort of system do you expect us to start with? Um, we, we, we Realistically, we've, we've sometimes gone with two up. We It looks like a little, we've obviously got wingers now as well. So we've gone in some situations with, Actually, it's like an old four four two. Um, Yay! But, but with a capacity, so I think we are trying to play two. I don't think we're going to play two up in terms of right up against the centre halves. But we've we've mucked around with Omar Bugel. Bugel. I'm going to call him Omar. I can never pronounce his surname. I think we've it's Bu- Omar Bugel. 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 I don't call him mm. Bugel, but a Bugel. Um, so we've gone with Omar or or Harry Pell in that sort of number ten role, just off um, uh, Davison or uh, an Ali. Um, James Tilly, Neville um, has had a really good preseason. Bags of bags of pace. Um, James Tilly again. I think James Tilly has gone under the radar. Oh, he's the, he's the one we've not mentioned so far. Yeah, I think he's gone under the radar. I really do. And he's a decent player. You know, Cordy, Cordy fans were were not happy, were they? <laughs> when he, well, when never he left. Well, to be fair, he started the Exodus, didn't he? Yeah, everyone else is leaving now. You know, last person turned the light off at Crawley. Um, but yeah, so I think that's where we're going to play. But I think it can probably go into a four-two-three-one potentially. Um, but we look like we're going to. We definitely want to play with with a, a target man as such, or or someone who can hold the ball up and bring others into play. Okay, so Josh and Ali as a front two may or may not be a thing. We have to wait and see. Ali is Ali, Ali's not been. He's not even anywhere close to being one hundred percent fit, and he's still looking at right pain in the rear end for anybody that's playing against him. He's He's just got a hunger and he just scores goals, which is great. That's what forwards are paid to do. I'm just looking down the squad sheet, actually, that was in the programme for the friendlies with QPR and uh, Portsmouth. We won't talk more about this particular programme. I just happened to notice, sorry, the assistant referee for the QPR game. I noticed a couple of things just as I was looking. Uh, John Harley, apparently, the assistant manager at Portsmouth. That completely bypassed me. Mm. Um I forgot that Jody Morris, another an ex, another ex Chelsea player, was the Swindon manager, wasn't he? Until he lost his job at the end of last season, and that's right. Not, yeah, no, no, really don't like Jody Morris. Uh, Paul Yates was the assistant referee, and I just saw that and thought of Paulie Yates. Do you remember Paulie Yates? He used to do the big breakfast, I think. Anyway, yeah, blonde bleached hair, wasn't it? Yeah, blonde short hair. Anyway, uh, totally off topic now. Um, outgoings then this season, just a mention of them then, because we, we we've mentioned a number of new signings there, and you're looking at. A team that might start at Grimsby with very few, if any, maybe Josh, Jack Curry being the only two that would have started last season. Yeah, uh, which is interesting. Yeah, Ogden, yeah, Ogden Deer potentially, but yeah. Oh, yeah, so um, yeah, right back, of course. It, it, it was in and out, the, wasn't it? But yeah. Yeah. Um, some of the names that we know that have, have gone, uh, Ethan Chislett, we know, gone to Port Vale. Alex Woodyard has gone off to York City. Will Nightingale on loan at Ross 
County. So, um, you know, there has been some toings and froings in the squad. It does feel like a, essentially a brand new team that's going to line up at um, Grimsby on the opening day. Um, just a just a shout out to Alex Woodyard. Uh, Johnny Jackson spoke very highly of Woody at the Meet the Manager earlier this week, and uh, I think I think we all wish Woody the, the best. Um, good guy, really good guy. And he remember remember everyone. He scored the goal that denied a certain team in Buckinghamshire promotion a couple of years ago. <laughs> Without that goal, they would have been promoted. So we'll always have that. So uh, thank you, Woody. I think you would echo yeah. those thoughts. And you know what? Um, John Jackson was was pretty was spot on. You know, Woody's a nice guy, really nice guy. Anyone that meets Woody, it's very difficult to to dislike him. But equally, I think I think in hindsight, I I, I ended our season. I was like, let's keep him. I think Woody. Uh, I think in effect, Woody is very good. But that's always without the hindsight of knowing what players they want to bring in. Um, and I don't think there's any doubt that when you bring in a um, a player that's you know got promotion with Steve Nish in League One into that position, I don't think there's much of a, it's a no-brainer, really. I think Jake Reeves has sort of shown a, another level, and that's nothing, there's no disrespect to Woody, but it's just, you know, we know what we get with Jake Reeves, um, and then you've got other players that are around him, so I think I think it's, it's the right thing for everyone, you know, he's got a really good challenge, I think York, York spent quite a bit of money, um, so I think they do well in, in the National League, and it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Jake Reeves taking over the captaincy with Alex Pierce becoming vice-captain for the New season, right? Yeah, no, just very quickly. No brain with Jay Reeves. Do you know what? Um, 30 years old. Um, I was reminding him when we gave him the gold of the season award when our favorite first <laughs> season. Um, yeah. and he to be fair to him, he remembered it. Um, and I did laugh that he looked a lot younger and he said, So did you? <laughs> yeah, cheers for that. Yeah. But, but you know what? Generally, um, you can see he's generally a, a leader. Like, but not a leader in terms of shouting and demanding. But he is he's quietly un, he's quietly unassuming. But you can tell that he's definitely cap. That 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 team is going to be even better for having a Jake Reeves one in the team, but two as a as a leader on the pitch. What are your expectations for this season from us? For me personally, I don't know why I had I don't know why I add the word personally in there. If I say for me, it's obviously about you know, it's got to come from you. Yeah. Exactly, I know it's just one of those cliche things people <laughs> say without actually thinking what they're actually saying. Um, I just want to enjoy the season. I think we'll be fine. Um, yeah, no pressure. Just obviously, we're gonna. I will guarantee everyone that we're going to improve on last season, hundred percent, no doubt about that. Um, beat Wrexham. Beat Milton Keynes, I'll be happy. Maybe a cut run, maybe we can get to the third round of the FA Cup or something like that. But yeah, just enjoy the season, enjoy some wins. What about yourself, Stu? Yeah, I want to. Hey, look, John, I want to get us away from having such a poor January January window. And I know we look mm. at the season as a whole. You know, the January window is really important. Um, I want to see it. You know, we we're talking about the ball being and play more, but I want to see our, our players playing with the ball more in terms mm. of the injuries and stuff like that. I think that's a big area that, you know, in terms of pre-season, we've we've hardly picked up any injuries. So I'm feeling that the squad we've got looks decent, but I'm also more confident that we'll see more of them uh, and won't have to make all the changes that we've had per week. Um, league position, hey, look, do you know what? I'm not really... I said this the other day that I don't care. It's not that I don't care, but I, I'm... I want to see us progress off the pitch. And at the moment, I can see a really good, really good transfer window I'm excited to see how this squad develops. And I think we're getting a style of play, hopefully, that goes probably back to how we used to like it in terms of a really hard-working, doesn't give a monkeys about reputations and will every team that comes down to our place, we'll give them a game and they go back. And if they if they take the points from us, they will know they've worked their backsides off to, to get that. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I think this is Johnny. This is finally Johnny's team. You know, three chance of windows. He looks a lot more content. And I think that's because he's probably got his team that he wants to have. So um, I'm looking forward to it. But equally, I have the right to reserve judgment when we lose our first three games, of course. And, you know, that's football for you. Know? Well, don't... Hey, I think it's a tough start with the fixtures for oh, the new season. But actually... It's a tough, league. It's a tough I, league. It is a tough league. It is a very tough league. But I don't think we're going to do too badly at the start. What I um, would say is I just want... What I would like as well, I would just like some some more good memories of a season. Because last season, I mean, yeah. Orient at home, 
maybe the the win over Harrogate, possibly the, the late, away the winner, winner, yeah, Oldchester away with um, Chislett scoring. But I don't know, there wasn't a great deal to look back on, particularly favourably. So we want more moments to remember, I think. No, you're right because whenever we talk about um, Plow Lane, we go and talk about Lane Orient, don't we? Because that's all we can really. Yeah. I'm trying to think in the Oxford. first season of Plough... o- Oxford in the first season, the first win in yeah. front of fans. That yeah. was a that was one. But hey, look, <laughs> the warning signs were in that game as well. But it was a great memory and a great win. But other than that, yeah, there's not been a there's not been a great amount, has there? So no, you're right. You are right. It's about the memories, and yeah, I think you're spot on actually with that because we all know that Plough Lane is a lovely place to be. We know that because we sold four thousand four hundred season tickets, and I'm still surprised at that. Like I've, I've said to I've said to many people at the club, what would happen if we actually won a game of football uh, or had a good season? Because we are attracting fans, and let's be fair, we're not attracting them for the football, for the wins on the pitch, are we? Um, Obviously, so not. you're right. You're right. You know. So, um, and do you know what? You know what? Three seasons really taught me is I've missed my pie and naked chips even more than I thought I would. Like, I can't, they've not I been can't. around for pre season. What's going on? I can't wait to see them back at Plough Lane. I can't possibly comment, Stuart, on the catering, but hey, yeah, I'm, well, <laughs> there's a Greg's near opposite the road on the other side of the road now, isn't there? So, um, yeah, which if I had a lot, if, if I had a lot of cards for, I think I would have had quite a bit of money. I think they live, I think they, I've been obviously there for the tours during the summer and stuff like that, and I've been at Greg's every time, and I think they believe I live around the corner. Hmm. Um, and Starbucks is open now. Um, mm. which is decent and also the, the gym that um, is open but the, the, the oh, gym yes, has like, this, yes. yeah the gym hasn't opened but yeah, they've got like a coffee shop in there or something and it's all the rave apparently like now everyone who works at a club has got a real dilemma of where to go for lunch whereas before they probably bring the sandwiches in because there was nowhere to go um, so... do you remember when we used to work at the shop in Selhurst and you had the uh, you had the cafe like <laughs> about 100 yards away and then you had Sainsbury's it was like blimey I need to walk past Selhurst one of these days just to go back down there and see what it looks like these days I mean I'm imagining oh, it's not really okay, changed I, to be honest with you but... I think I can remember mm. um <laughs> mm. but yeah so um yeah there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of stuff down there but um it's busy the thing is what I would say is it was busy enough anyway obviously there's even more stuff now on that road um so yeah it's even busier we are rapidly running out of time. We've got a lot to squeeze in still. So yes. very briefly, just, I mean, I, I, I'm not together this list looking around the rest of League Two of where we roughly think challenges for promotion, relegation candidates, all that sort of business. And I sort of <laughs> condensed it into this list. I think most people, the common wisdom is the top three will be Wrexham, Notts County and Stockport. I think they are considered to be the three favourites that will probably contest the uh, championship, for, contest the title. Yeah, Joe, the only difference I've got is I've not put Notts County in my top seven. Um, oh, OK. Because I think there will be one club, I think it's a very strong league, and I think there'll be one club that people think will do well, I don't think they will as well. Um, I've got Wrexham, Stockport and Gillingham in that okay, order. Yeah, Gillingham, yeah. So Gillingham are in my sort of next group down then challenging because of the clearly the finances that have gone in there. Similarly, you expect Salford and Bradford again to be up there. Colchester yeah. have put money in. Doncaster expected yeah. to do well. I put Doncaster in my my challenge. I put my in my playoff positions. Yeah. Um, and I put Carlisle in there because I think I've got a good manager at Carlisle. It'll be um, that'll be a, a hell of a trick for Carlisle to do well in League Two. Oh, they've gone up, haven't they? Yeah. Who on earth were you thinking of? <laughs> oh, your face at this moment is a picture. I wish we were doing oh, the visual. Oh, you know what? This tells you how sometimes when you do your research and you don't really clock <laughs> this is a, this is legendary this is up there with turf mill i was like carlisle will do well again this season of course they've done very well last season yeah yeah of course carlisle um they won't be doing in the top half of league two because they're not in league two i don't know i replaced them with them probably um i don't know it's very friendly really i'm not You're... sure about colchester i know spent money um i don't think it'd be mansfield i'm just gonna go with top, i'm just gonna go with three people in the playoffs because i can't really think of anyone else now that we replace Carlisle because I wasn't expecting Tata to replace them. <laughs> dare I ask? Dare I ask who you think is going to go down? Hartlepool, Rochdale, who have you got? <laughs> no, no, um, I've got Crew and Crew and Crawley. Okay, Crawley. I think we're all expecting to go down. Crew yeah. is interesting. Okay, I just, I just think sometimes in terms of budgets, and I know it's not all about budgets, but that's why we. I just think Crawley definitely, and I think 
crew will eventually struggle. I think they're going to be one of those teams that would have a, a rough season at some point. Um, and I just have a little bit of fancy that they will. Crew, yeah, it's, it's a strange one. I, I hope they're right. I like crew. And, yeah, uh, I hope if I had a choice, there'd be two teams. Cordy definitely and one other team would be my, my automatic for people that I don't like. Um, but I don't want to talk about them at any point. No, fair enough. No, we're not going to talk about that other lot. Um, Sutton, how do you think Sutton are going to get on this season? Because I think they could be in a bit of a struggle as well. Although they've signed a couple of decent players. You look at, do you know what? You look at their recruitment, it's decent. It's decent recruitment. If you, you know, they have a certain way of playing, probably not too dissimilar to how we want to play. We probably want to play with a bit more, I don't mean some disrespect, I think we probably want to play with a bit more quality in certain areas. Uh, I don't think they struggle at all. I think they'd be easily probably top half. I've, if I said where we're going to finish or where I'd like us to finish, I'd go on for 12th, just yeah. bang the table. I wouldn't be surprised to see Sutton probably either side 11th or 13th. I don't think. I don't think they're going to be in trouble going down, not by what I've seen of their recruitment. Okay, well, we start next next season. We start the season away at Grimsby on Saturday. We will quickly have a look at Grimsby after we have a go at brand new game, which I'm very excited about, Stu. And I I have called it this season. This game is basically blankety blank, but... I couldn't think of a name for it. So I've taken one of the parts of Blankety Blank and I've come up with the Aaron Sass Super Match game. <laughs> and it's very simple, like Stu. It. I'm like just going to give you one sentence and you just have to fill in the blanks correctly. Okay? You just have to fill in the blank of this sentence correctly. All right? Nice and straightforward. And it's tied in with our opponents on Saturday. So. On the 23rd of March, 2002, we lost 6-2 at Blundell Park in the mm-hmm. old Nationwide League Division 1. Mm-hmm. Grimsby's fourth goal was a penalty, scored mm-hmm. by Alan Putin. Mm-hmm. But it was scored at the second attempt. His first attempt was saved by goalkeeper Blank Blank but ordered to be retaken for encroachment. So this is the keeper, isn't it? I've got a name. Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, I could have just asked you which goalkeeper saved the penalty at Grimsby, but then had to be retaken. Who would have been playing back then? Would have been Paul, no, Paul Hill? Is that your final answer? I think it might be right. It's not. Ah. And you know what? I misremembered this as well. It was Shane Gore. Because... Wow the goalkeeper who started the game was sent off in conceding the penalty right Shane Gore was a substitute he came on making his league debut his first touch saves a penalty and then it gets ordered to be retaken for encroachment if you watch it back and I'll put the highlights out on our Twitter at 9YRS podcast for everyone to watch there is horrendous encroachment for another penalty that they scored and this was their second penalty I think and um there was no encroachment whatsoever. And you can maybe argue that he was perhaps a yard off his line, but I don't think so. It was an absolute injustice on a grand scale, but Shane Gore was indeed the answer. I thought it had been Paul Heald that had been sent off originally, but it was actually Ian Foyer who played that day, and he was sent off. The American, the American goalkeeper was about six yeah. foot. Yeah, well, huge. Seven foot, when he was humongous, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, didn't, Shane, didn't Shane Gore then play against us for... Yes. A, 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 a days, didn't he? Is that he right? did, he did. I, I want to say Hastings, but I'm not sure. We'd have to look that one up. No, no one wants to live at Hastings, do they? Do you know what I mean? Poor bloke, he ended up living down there. It's a bit of a battle um, to get down there. Not the... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I set that one up, didn't I? There but, we go. Yeah. Anyway, so there cool. you go. Grimsby, we revisit. They were our final fixture of last season at Blundell Park. Can't recall this ever happening before where we ended the season with no. the same fixture. We start the next one. We lost 1-0, but who, no one cared at that point. Uh, last season, they finished 11th in their first season back in the Football League, but they also reached the quarter final of the FA Cup, beating Southampton and Luton Town on their mm. route uh, to finally being knocked out by Brighton in the end. Good manager in Paul Hurst, very experienced manager, at lower levels. Couple of couple of transfer things I want to touch on. They have signed Danny Rose from Stevenage, got promoted with Stevenage last season, was almost yep. never present, played 43 league games last season, only scored six goals, which surprised me. But that's a very, very good signing. They've lost 
their goalkeeper, Max Crocombe, who was ever present last season. Um, they offered him a new contract. He rejected it. They've got in what seems to be Jake Eastwood from Sheffield United as a replacement. And he is someone that's been on Sheffield United, been on loan many, many places, but never been a sort of number one choice anywhere. You wouldn't expect him to be at Sheffield United, I suppose. But so that's a no. but 26 years of age coming into a sort of without a regular run of games is interesting. Anyway, that's their problem to worry about. What do you reckon? I think we're going to win. I think Grimsby are going to go into this thinking that they're going to have another good season and they're going to improve on last season after the FA Cup run. Duh, 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 duh. And I think they're going to look at us having a poor season, think it's an easier home win on the opening day. And I think we're going to upset the apple cart, so to speak. Yeah, it's, it's so difficult, isn't it? Because you could argue that we've only conceded one goal in pre-season and lost, you know, and that's the results. They've, they've lost four games in pre-season. Um, so if you want to really, it's so difficult to start the season, isn't it? it's, it's like a exciting new season. You're right. Hopefully they're preparing for the team that we sent last game. <laughs> Don't, you know, because it is, I don't know, Johnny Jackson's right. It's a really good gauge of where we are. If, you know, it's, I can't remember the last time that's happened where we go. You know, the last game of the season is your first game of the following one. So for us, it's probably a good benchmark. And my attitude is, you know, like anything, let's just not lose our first game of the season. I think that's always a real important thing to do. I'll take a draw straight away. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to see how we play. Um, you know, we really have changed this team of how they play. We look a lot more solid, a lot more exciting going forward. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how we play. Uh, yes, it's a result business, but equally, it's a long season. And um, if we can start hitting, if we start having an identified way of playing, um, then, I, you know, that for me would be brilliant. So, and also just don't pick up any injuries because we've got Wrexham, Commentary and Wrexham coming up, um, which are two exciting games. Yeah, for the first um, home games of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Commentary in the League Cup on Wednesday, of course, before Wrexham come down with the Circus on the Saturday. Uh, <laughs> just a quick <laughs> scoreline prediction for Grimsby. Uh, nil, nil. Okay, all right. You sound like me. I'm going for a two-one win, and I've already put this. <laughs> As my prediction on the Ask a Prediction League, we'll put the link out on our Twitter as well. And I've locked it in. I just feel it coming. 2-1 win. Happy days. Things must be happy. If you're thinking we're going to win on the first game of the season, when we... How many games did we lose last season? 21. Yeah, bonus... 21, thanks for reminding us that, Stu. I'm just balancing out all my... 20, there we go. Well, yeah. But I'm just balancing out all the negativity from things like um, cashless stadiums and programmes. But we're not going to get into that now. We don't have the time. We've only got two minutes left. Uh, elsewhere in Lita, I'm looking forward. Stockport versus Gillingham seems a big, big game on the opening day of the season. Big one. Yeah, big one. But also be interested to see how, and we didn't mention some of these teams, the likes, the relegated teams, Accrington Stanley, they host Newport, two teams I think that will be in the lower reaches this season, Morecambe and Warsaw similarly. And I think Morecambe and Accrington could be those that are probably looking over their shoulders at relegation, along with Harrogate Town, who have a Yorkshire derby with Doncaster. Do you know what would be interesting? Started at home to Notts County. Um, yeah. You've got a team that will play direct football against a, a team that, um, when Neil Ardy done our VIP tour in the summer, he said Notts County keep the ball for fun. I think they had like 70% possession the whole season. So you're going to have a team that's going to put, put the ball forward very quickly and Notts who are going to... How are they going to adapt to um, League Two? I, I'm looking forward to seeing how that one goes. And that's it, I think, Stu. Because our time is yeah. rapidly ticking down. But um, we have many subjects we will talk about next week when we start coming back to home matches. But that is it. If you're going up to Grimsby, good luck. Have a good day travelling. Stay dry. It's going to be very, very wet. And you never know. Sometimes the weather conditions can also make things difficult as well. So impact the game. We shall see. Updates will be on our Twitter at 9 Wires Podcast. And if you've got an early train on the way back, <laughs> you should have thought about that one. <laughs> Yeah, good luck as long as there's not 20 minutes of injury time. On that note, that is it for this week. So, Stu, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Good luck to Carlisle for the League Two campaign. But thank you, everyone, for listening. Alexa Bliss, bag first, milk last, two plus two continues to equal four. And we shall speak to you again next week. <laughs>